Hi readers! Today I'm going to be answering all of your questions in my 100 subscriber Q&A. Once again, I just want to say a thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel and I was so, so, so pleasantly surprised with all the uh, comments and questions that I got in my last video. I knew that there would be like a couple people I could count on to actually ask a question, but the fact that so many people did was such a nice surprise and it made me feel really, really, really happy. So uh, thank you again. I'm just going to go through all of these and yeah. And at the end, if you stick around to the end, there's going to be a little surprise for you. So question number one came from Book Buds and they asked, how do you fit in reading? Do you read a certain time of day? Do you have a routine? Or are you more spontaneous? For me, um, I am not usually spontaneous. <laughs> I do have a routine that I try to stick to, try being the key word here every day. And that is I'm a morning reader. So the first thing that I do when I wake up in the morning is make myself a nice hot cup of coffee and settle down with my stack of TBR books. I try to spend anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour reading in the morning. Um, depending on the day, sometimes that may be more or less. Be specifically the past two weeks when I've started my new job, um, it's definitely been more at the half hour mark. So uh, I do sometimes spontaneously read in the evening if I'm watching a show that I really like. I'll read like during commercial breaks or something like that. But for the most part, it's in the morning whenever I wake up, coffee, books, that is my every morning routine. Thank you, Book Buds, for that question. The next question, and sorry if I'm pronouncing this right, pronouncing this wrong, is from Rosie Kakshet, and it is, what surprised you most about starting a booktube channel, positive or negative? Um, I guess I would say the thing that surprised me most was the type of videos that got more views than other types of videos. If you go back and watch some of my early booktube videos, so from the end of 2020, I was definitely one of those people that like, I was very nervous, I was not comfortable being on camera, and I would legit type out an entire script that I would try to read from, word from word, and if I messed up, like I would start the whole thing over again. And now, I pretty much don't write any scripts, except for my one minute videos, those I have to because I have to figure out what I wanna say between that specific period of time. But other than that, I don't do any scripts, I just wing it. And I found that, that should be obvious, but it wasn't to me at first, that being more natural and just kind of winging it is in general what people want to see more than someone who's just, you know, very stiff and reading from a script. So I guess you could say that's I don't know, positive, negative, just an observation. And then the other thing I would say on the positive side is that there is a whole community of booktube people out there. And I don't know why this surprised me because I have found a lot of the same over on Instagram, but everyone that I meet is just so kind and supportive. And it's that just makes me so happy. I try to do the same thing in a return to everyone who's been supportive to me. That's, you know, always my goal. Try to share the love, return the favor. So that has been a very pleasant surprise. And only, even though I've only been on BookTube for less than a year now, I have made so many great friends with some other BookTubers. And that just makes me really happy. Books bring people together. Question number three is from C. Jar, and C. Jar asks, do you know of any cool picture books about ferrets for kids? This one I did not know off the top of my head, so I had to go and uh, look for some. So I did uh, Google some ferret picture books for kids just to see what was out there, and there are definitely a couple of cute ones out there. Um, the one that stood out to me, though, was... My Furry Foster Family by 
Debbie Machico Florence. I'll put that up there. It looks like she has a whole series of books and one of them happens to be about ferrets. And because they're calling it my foster family, Murray is the name of their ferret and I rescue ferrets. That's kind of the one that spoke to me. So I can link that one in the description box below. Uh, Sea jar if you want to take a look at it on Amazon. And again, there's a couple of other ones out there as well. I wasn't personally familiar with any, but that's the one that jumped out at me the most. Question number four is from Kathy K. Uh, this is an easy question. What is your favorite book of all time? And then she also asked what you do for a living. So let me start with the easy one, which is what is your favorite book of all time? Just kidding. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Um, for the past 10, 15 years of my life, I've actually worked in the hospitality industry. I've worked for a couple different uh, major hospitality companies, like uh, Marriott Hotels is a big one. Um, and I just recently started with a new hospitality company, and I basically do like market research. So if you've ever stayed at a hotel, and then after you left, got an email that said, hey, tell us about your stay, you got a survey, like basically I'm the person on the back end that's helping the hotels get all their data from that survey. So what are guests, what are your guests saying, you know, those type of things. So it's very marketing, market research, consumer insights, that type of stuff, which is not something I would have guessed I'd be doing if you had asked me back when I was in college, but that is what I do. That is how I make a living, and I'm very happy that I recently got a new job being able to do that same thing. And again, now on to the difficult question, the favorite book of all time. Ooh, that's a doozy. <laughs> I like there's so many different books that I like from different genres, so it's really hard because there are YA fantasy books that I love and there are Stephen King books that I love. So it's always hard to narrow down just one. But I guess at the end of the day, if I had to pick a series, a favorite series, it's probably going to be Harry Potter. This is the Malfoy, the Amazing Bouncing Ferret. If you are familiar with Harry Potter, you'll recognize that from the fourth book. And if I had to pick a favorite book from that series, it would probably be book number three, The Prisoners of Azkaban. I love that book so much because that was the first book that... That book came out when I was about 12 or 13-ish, maybe 14, but I remember that is the first book that my mother took me to the bookstore it was a Borders, and Borders had stayed open really, really late at night so that everyone could get the new Harry Potter book. And that was the first time that I found myself in a huge crowd of people that were all there for a book. And I thought that was just like so amazing. And I stayed up all night reading the book, and I remember... There's this scene, if you're familiar with Prisoners of Azkaban, where the kids are going back to Gryffindor Tower and they get to the portrait of the fat lady and it's all slashed up. And I swear to God, my the door of my bedroom like swang closed and I like jumped out of my skin. I was absolutely terrified at that age reading that book. And to this day, it's still one of my favorites. I love it so much. So I guess if I had to pick then I would pick Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Number five is going to be, what is a book that you always recommend? Again, there's a bunch depending on what you want to read, but I would say the author that I generally always recommend is going to be Jacqueline Carey. And she you might be familiar with, if you're really into fantasy, um, her Kushiel's Dart series is like kind of the first big series that she wrote. It's one of my favorites. She has so, so, so many good books. So I guess Kushiel's Dart would be my pick for this. She's got amazing characters in this world. It's amazing world building. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically based on like European, I think it's France. So it's kind of like an alternate version of France where like gods have previously walked the earth and there's all these temples. And in this society, like if you are 
they treat um they treat sex and sexuality and desire in such a happy and healthy way and like their whole thing is like love is thou wilt so no matter whom you love no matter what type of person you love what type of gender like it's all accepted it's praised it's like it's such a cool uh way that this society is built and again that's just like the background of like the whole plot that's going on so it's a sexy book it's a fantasy book it's got like intrigue and like court games and that type of stuff there's mystery there's backstabbing there's drama like there is a little bit of everything in this book romance so kushiel start jacqueline carey if you're looking for an adult fantasy this is the one that i would go to and i think i forgot to mention this but that question was asked by reading nymph who is one of my favorite uh fellow booktubers and fellow uh bookstagrammers Number six is from David's book reviews, and that is, who are some of your favorite self-published authors? Now, I have to admit, I have not read a ton of self-published authors. In fact, I think before this year, I really don't think I've read any, unless you can count, like, Fifty Shades of Grey, which was written as, like, a weird fanfic before it got published, but... This year, I have been lucky enough to read some more uh, independent self-published books. Um, if you've been following my channel for a while, you saw I reviewed uh, Gutted by Nicole Bates and Hybrid Magic by Christy Bolin. It is something that I am interested in, interested in reading more uh, independent authors and self-published books. So it's kind of hard to answer that because I've only read the two and one was an adult sci-fi one was a more of a middle grade fantasy so they were very 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 different books um so it's hard to say if I liked one better than the other because they're totally different and again hybrid magic I did have a special relationship with because I was a beta reader for it so I don't know I can't really give an honest unbiased opinion of that but at some point in the future if I come across some more which I know David has been kind enough to recommend some for me I'm definitely going to add those to my TBR and check them out and maybe I'll be able to answer this question better uh next time around number seven Mason in the dark I have a couple questions for Mason and the first one is <laughs> and this one amuses me if your best friend came to you and confessed they suffered from a werewolfism, how would you react and what would you do to help them? Um, I think if my best friend came to me and said they were a werewolf, my first reaction would probably, probably be to laugh hysterically and be like, no effing way, you're joking, ha 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 ha. And then if they were serious, I'd be like, okay, like, holy crap, wow, um, that's cool. What can I do? <laughs> I I would hope that I would be the type of friend that'd be like, okay, like, where do we need to bury the bodies? Let's go. I'll come get you. I'll grab my shovel. Let's let's take care of it. I hope that I would be that type of friend. So whatever my werewolf friends need, if you are suffering from werewolfism, feel free to DM me. I will help you. Werewolves for life. I hope that helped answer your question, Mason. Next, Mason asked, uh, if you like them, what is your favorite type of roller coaster? This is a good question because uh, my friends who I, whom I go on vacation with every year think that I'm absolutely nuts when it comes to roller coasters. So here's my thing. I like certain types of roller coasters and I do not like other types of roller coasters. I do not like roller coasters that have really big drops. So when you get that like zero G stomach in your throat type feeling, I do not like that. So I think it's about two seconds is about what it takes before like I will start feeling that. So I will look, I will watch a ride and I will count how long it takes to get from top to bottom. And if it's more than two seconds, I will not go on it. But, but, and a big but here, 
I absolutely love upside down roller coasters because most upside down roller coasters don't have those big those big plunges on them. They just loop de loop and do all that stuff. I'm fine with loop de loops. I love loop de loops. And I love going upside down and being thrown around. As long as it's not, again, a big deep drop. Like, think about the pirate ship, the one that swings back and forth. I absolutely hate that ride. Ugh. No pirate ships. But I love loop de loops. I don't know why I'm nuts. I like being upside down. I just don't like falling down. I hope that makes sense. Those are the types of roller coasters that I love. The next question Mason asked is, what is the best meal that you or your partner makes? Um, again, we have a couple of go-to meals in our family. Um, one of them is soup. I love making soup in the winter. I have a couple different soups that I've kind of I'll say I've mastered. I will say it. I will say it. My family has said that I've ruined canned soup for them, so I'll take it. I'm a master at at least three types of soup. <laughs> Minestrone, uh, New England clam chowder, and my personal favorite, broccoli and cheese. So, soup. And then Mason's last question is, what is your funniest ferret-related story? <laughs> and again, there's so many because my ferrets make me laugh every single day. But the one that I go to most often when I'm trying to explain to people what life is like with ferrets is Jack-Jack. So Jack-Jack is very special, and Jack-Jack does not like it when we all leave the house. So when Jack-Jack is alone, if he's alone for too long, he gets very upset and he throws temper tantrums. So a lot of times, even if we sleep in too late, sometimes we'll get up and we'll find that uh, he's pulled books off the shelves or he's knocked the controller off of the PlayStation. Maybe he got up on the table and knocked stuff over. So I have this one picture, which I'll put up over here. He pulled out all the DVDs from this shelf and you can see he's not hiding it. He's like, yep, I did it. It was me. You left me alone. This is what you have to deal with. So that is Jack Jack, a weekly occurrence with him. The next question is from Kristen Smith and she asks, how many books are in your home library? Um, when did you start collecting books and have you always been a reader? How many books do I have in my home library? I literally have no idea. Um, if I can figure out how to edit this video later and add this in, I'm going to throw in a clip of some of my bookshelves. Hopefully I got that in there, but if not, I'm just going to go ahead and take a general stab in the dark, and I'd say at least over a hundred. Um, there's a lot, because I went through a, how many books have I, do I have in my TBR pile, and that was like 50 or 60, and there's about 10 bookshelves in my house. So actually, no, I was... <laughs> I said 100. I think it's probably close to like 500 if I'm being honest. <laughs> so yeah, between, so this is one, that's two. In the room I'm sitting in, there's three, four, five, six, seven. And then in my bedroom, there's eight. In my uh, stepdaughter's room, there's nine, ten. So there's ten bookshelves in this house. There's a lot. Um... When did you start collecting books? I have been collecting books my entire life. I really don't know how 
it started, I guess I have to blame my mother because when I was like a little child and we read like Dr. Seuss and the Berenstein Bears or the Mercer Mare books, like I wanted to read all of them. If I found a book that I liked or an author that I liked, we would just keep getting them. So those are the kind of the books that I started with. And then when I was in middle school, it was like Babysitter's Club, Goosebumps, R.L. Stein, Sweet Valley High. And then, of course, we got into Harry Potter and Redwall and then moved on from there. So my entire life, I've been collecting books. I still have a box of books in my closet. It's buried under stuff, so I couldn't dig it out. But that has a lot of my Mercer Mayer and Berenstein books still in there. Like, I still have those books because I want to hopefully give them to a child in our family someday. So I, I guess that answers the next question. Have I always been a reader? Yes, I've always been a reader. I had a wonderful mother who always read to me, who always encouraged me to read. And again, <laughs> at a very young age, fostered my unhealthy habit of collecting books. So I blame her for all of this. Thanks, Mom. Next question is from Jin Park, and it is, what is your opinion on DNFing a book? Do you power through to the end, or do you feel that life is too short for bad books? If you do DNF, at what point? I know this is a hot topic for a lot of people, and before I say anything, I want to say whatever you choose to do in your personal life, you go for it. Everyone has their own opinion. I'm totally cool with that. For me, I have only DNF'd two books in my entire life. Two, that's right. One was The Prophecy of the Stones, which is, I believe it's a middle grade fantasy. It was written by like a 12, 14 year old French girl, translated into English. And then the second one was, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, I'll have to look it up, but it's the second book in the Rhapsody series. I, so yeah, in general, I don't DNF. I read through to the bitter, bitter end. I just, I don't know. I've read tons of books where the ending has like changed how I felt about the book. Like a recent example is Mistborn. Through most of Mistborn, I was like, oh, this book is okay, but I don't see what the big deal is about it. And then I got to the end and I was like, oh, wow, holy crap, that just changed the whole book. That was great. So every time I'm reading like a bad book or a book I don't really like, I'm always hopeful that like something will happen at the end that will at least leave me feeling on a good note. Now that doesn't always happen. Like I read The Talisman recently by Stephen King. I did not like that book. It was 800 pages and it was painful. And if I was one of those people who DNF'd, I probably would have about halfway through. But I didn't. I stuck with it till the bitter, bitter end. So, yep, I've only DNF two books so far in my entire life. Um, it's possible I could DNF a book in the future. Like I said, it has happened. Not very often, but it has happened. So if I ever do it again, you'll know that it was really, really bad. <laughs> Next question is from Sin, and they ask... How old are your fur babies? So currently we have three ferrets, Jack-Jack, uh, Meepers, and Snowball. Um, because all three of them are rescue ferrets, it is a little bit difficult to know exactly how old they are. Because Jack-Jack... Um, so really quick, without getting into the whole thing, Jack-Jack was abandoned at, a, um, at an animal hospital. He had um, some sort of a blockage going on in his stomach, so he was in a lot of pain. Um, if they, whoever, wherever he came from, if they had not dropped him off there, he probably would have died. But because they dropped, left him in a box at an animal hospital, they were able to save his life. And then I knew someone who worked there. They knew that we took in ferrets. So they're like, hey, can you take this guy? We said yes. That was about four years ago. And so we don't really know exactly how old Jack-Jack is. So I assume he's at least six or seven now. He could be older. Who knows? And then we have uh, Snowball and Beepers. Snowball came from a friend of the family. They had had Snowball for, for I think five or six years, they said. So 
and now we've had her about two, so she's about seven or eight. She's she's an old lady, Snowball. Um, she's the one that's losing a lot of hair because she has adrenal. Um, so yeah, Snowball is an old lady. I think she might be older than Jack. Jack, Jack. And then finally, we have Meepers. Again, Meepers was another rescue. We've had Meepers for three years. The woman that we got her from, I think, had her for two. So she's at least five, but could be six or seven. So they're all a little bit older, the ones that we have right now. And yeah, those are all the current fur babies. Next question is a, another question from Seajar, and that is, what kind of reader are you? Are you a mood reader, or do you really like to plan out your TBR? I am a total planner. I am not a mood reader. I plan the books I'm going to read, like, months in advance. I actually have a notebook where I write down um, each category of book I'm reading. So I have like uh, my Stephen King books, my adult fantasy, my YA fantasy, my historical fiction, my middle grade, and I write down exactly this is the current book I'm reading, this is the next one I want to read, blah 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 blah. Now that is not to say that I don't periodically cross things off and write new things in when I get them, um, but for the most part I definitely plan it all out. So whenever I hear people say like they have buddy reads coming up next month or read-alongs, I want to participate in them, but I'm like, I already have the next like six months planned out, so <laughs> I need a little bit, I need a little bit more notice than that. But I'm trying to work on being more like spontaneous, but hasn't quite happened. And then finally, we come to my last question from Jeremy Fee, another uh, super easy one, which is pirates or ninjas. And I say that jokingly, but this actually is an easy question for me. And nothing against one side or the other, but for me, there's no competition. It's pirates. I love pirates. When the Pirates of the Caribbean movie first came out, the first one back in the day with Johnny Depp, I think I saw that movie like six to ten times in the movie theater. I dressed up as a pirate for Halloween at least four years in a row. My friends and I dressed up like pirates and just like went out and like went to dinner and just walked around town. Like we were obsessed with pirates. <laughs> So I have the soundtracks to all three movies, the Pirates movies. So Pirates, I was definitely into Pirates way more than Ninjas. I still like Ninjas, but there's no comparison to me for Pirates. So that brings me to the end of the Q&A. Thank you again so much for everyone who watched the video and asked a question. So like promised, to celebrate my 100 subscriber milestone, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. And the giveaway is going to be, I decided to try and make it as fair as I could from everyone. The giveaway is going to be one book of your choice from whatever service that you use to get your books from. So as long as you have a um, an Amazon, an Audible, or some other type of uh, electronic place that I can get a book from for you in your country, wherever it happens to be, one book of your choice I will be giving to you. So in order to enter the giveaway, what you have to do is you have to like this video and then leave a comment below. And all I'm asking you to do is just leave something positive. Put some positivity out there in the world. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, just something good that'll make other people who see it feel happy. So the contest or the giveaway is going to open today, obviously, when this video is posted. And the giveaway will be open until Friday, August 6th. I will be pulling a winner randomly. I'll film the whole thing so that you can see it. I'll announce someone there. So hopefully that all <laughs> made sense. I'll be putting all the details in the description box below in case you need them. And yeah, good luck to everyone. And thank you again so, so much. This was so much fun. Have a great day.